There are great pilots on that team. They have the freedom to let you be you, to be as aggressive as you want to be, to fully display the capabilities of the airplane, the pride and precision of the F-16 and of our Air Force. I am the only son, which is a common trait for pilots, uh, of five children, so I have four sisters. My parents both went to Cal Berkeley. My dad was a football player, played in the 59 Rose Bowl. And uh, in 19, the late 60s, he was called to active duty. He was a reservist, just trying to make ends meet. Vietnam War kicked off. He was called to active duty. He went to Vietnam for a year. After he got back, he uh, was uh, assigned to be an instructor at the Air Force Academy. So uh, for four years, we lived on the Air Force Academy and we went to every graduation and those guys were role models for me. I wanted to grow up and be like those cadets. And when I saw the Thunderbirds fly, uh, it blew my mind uh, to think, I mean, it just became a dream. It's what the guys told me when I asked, how do you go to the Air Force Academy? And they said, study hard, get good grades and don't do drugs. And it's not any more complicated than that. I graduated in 1985. It was hard. Uh, 40 plus percent of my class did not graduate. So high attrition rate. Um, but yeah, it, it accomplished the goal. Uh, I was able to go on to pilot training uh, in Wichita Falls, Texas, where I met my wife. Uh, so I graduated from there in 1986. Went on to fly A-10s, which was awesome to be able to shoot that 30 millimeter Gatling gun. Phenomenal. You got a lot of hours in a very short period of time that allowed me to uh, be selected for the then secret F-117 program. And it was a very interesting time because August 2nd, 1990, Saddam Hussein invaded Kuwait. Well, I had just joined the F-117 squadron. By the end of August, one of our squadrons had deployed. By December, I deployed. And uh, 30 years ago, nearly to the day, uh, I was flying combat missions in um, Iraq. So 44 combat missions, primarily to Baghdad, hitting Saddam Hussein's palace. I hit the Osiric nuclear reactor and blew it to smithereens. And it's just like you think about. It. You're that eight-year-old kid that wanted to go fly. You're alone in the most secret airplane in the world, you don't have a wingman, and you're the guy that gets to go take this out for your country. It was a dream come true. Very happy to have survived that. Uh, it's easy for me, me to remember because my daughter was born while I was doing this. So I didn't meet her till she was five months old. Came back, flew a lot of air shows in the F-117 because timing is, is everything in the military. We were trying to sell B-2s. We were trying to get Congress to fund the new stealth bomber. So we were on the road telling the world that stealth works. So I flew air shows all over uh, North America in the F-117. While I was doing that, I applied for and was selected for the Air Force demonstration team, the Thunderbirds, uh, that flew F-16s. The military is the best training program in the world. It's a building block approach. You start out with just, you know your airplane, you know it hands down cold. Now you fly in formation with another airplane and you start to learn the maneuvers. His name's Jeff Rochelle. He was the left wingman, he hired me. And Roach is training me, he's the left wingman, and we're learning these maneuvers. Roach was so damn good that he let me be me, but he didn't know how good I was. I was new and I knew I was the best damn fighter pilot that ever walked. So I said, well, how do we do this rejoin after the Thunderbird bomb burst? And he goes, you do your best rejoin and I'll match you. I go, They've had handcuffs on me my entire training career. They don't ever let you do your best rejoin. They want you to have 30 degrees and 30 knots overtake and be on altitude and on and on and on. So I had the freedom to do whatever I wanted to do. So after we did the bombers cross, it's nine G's 
and I am going after the boss. I've got a very hot pursuit angle, and but I knew that I could judge it at the right time and go idle, boards, full rudder, and stop this thing when I needed to. And we're inverted, and he's coming back down out of the Cuban 8, and I rejoin this thing, and it just worked. Sometimes it doesn't work, sometimes you overshoot. It just, I nailed it. And I'm like, okay, I can't wait to see the tape <laughs> because <laughs> he, I'm gonna leave him in the dust. Well, the tape shows that Roach is not only doing a better rejoin than I was, he was matching me, so the symmetry was beautiful. That's how good the team is. So at Indian Springs, I had my first air show in front of a crowd, two or 300 people maybe, probably school kids mostly. Um, it went fine, because that's where we'd practice all the time. And, um, but it's the first time I've done an autograph line with the Thunderbirds. So that was pretty, uh, pretty exciting. I was always pumped up. I always loved it. Uh, uh, I loved uh, interaction with kids, because again, my wife accuses me of this. I'm that eight-year-old kid, but I'm getting to live my dream so I could see me in those kids. And I got a lot out of that. Really, really enjoyed the interaction with, with the folks that would come out to the show. And so my first job on the Thunderbirds, I was a navigation officer. So I'd have to plan all the arrivals and you've got all these paper charts on your knees for the different approaches. The Chicago controllers speak very fast and they changed our approach three or four times. So we're ripping through the paper, trying to hit the points and uh, make this approach into O'Hare. We land and there's a, a KC-135 refueling unit there. And so we parked on their ramp, but then we'd launch out of there too. So they'd shut down, down O'Hare, one of the busiest airports in the world. So the Thunderbirds could take off and go fly downtown. The weather forecasted wasn't that great. So we're actually practicing a low show and in the low bomb burst, I come from over the water towards the city. And then you do your most aggressive rejoin to get back together. So we cross and I'm headed right towards the Sears Tower. And I'm ripping, you know, full afterburner, full G's to rejoin on the boss because I'm racing Roach. And the boss says, roll out. So I roll out, the Sears Tower goes, whew, right past us and I'm looking at it, I don't know what floor, but there's a guy in a cummerbund and a bow tie, so he's a waiter, and he's waving his ass off at me as I go ripping right past him in that building. And then we rejoin on the boss on the other side. Who gets to do that stuff? It's 1993, they just opened the Denver International Airport and we're the first skid marks on that runway. That runway is absolutely pristine. We land. The thing that I remember from that air show, the snowbirds were there, big, big crowds. They didn't have all the infrastructure completely figured out yet. People are in line forever in their cars. People are running out of gas. So they're pulling their car off the side of the road and they're walking in. The snowbirds abort their takeoff because people are walking across the runway trying to get to the air show. It was a little bit of the wild, wild west. So in my two demo years, we did exchanges with the Blues both years. The first year, the Thunderbirds went to Pensacola and the Blues hosted us in Pensacola. And we both flew our shows. We did an exchange of flight suits at the end, and it was phenomenal. The takeaway for me was there's a lot to be learned from the heritage of doing this business. A uh, lot of lessons learned. And as a new guy, I was a sponge, just anything I could learn. And I realized all fighter pilots are the same. We just love to fly. Second year, they came out to Las Vegas. They briefed, and they have a very different style of briefing. It's almost like a seance and they practice their radio calls in the brief. That was eye-opening the first time I saw that. So they do that in front of our team and then we go through our brief, which is a standard Air Force brief. And then I flew in Lawman's backseat, uh, the right wingman of the Blues. We land from the show and I'll tell you, it's damn close. They fly very, very close 
And when your hand is not on the stick, it's a very uh, uneasy feeling. But then I got to reciprocate and return the favor and he flew in my back seat. We had beautiful weather. We had no wind. All the jets worked. Their jets, our jets. The Golden Knights jump into Caesars. They all landed on the platform of the fountains where Evil Knievel jumped the fountain back in the day. And then we go into Caesars and we have a big night. Unbel who gets to do that stuff? It's unbelievable. Really, really good memories. This was the busiest job I've ever had. It was um, nearly 24 seven. You'd go to high schools, you'd go to hospitals, you'd go to, um, we call them PRs, public relation events. Um, but the sick kids that, um, for whatever reason, um, couldn't fly. The, the, the hand that they were dealt was not the hand I was dealt. And as a 27, 28 year old kid, I think I was a, one of the youngest Thunderbirds ever. So one of the significant revelations to me was we're not all given the same shot that life. And these kids that are terminal, love the Thunderbirds, desperately want to fly an F-16 as desperately as I wanted to fly an F-16, but never will. And so I put my helmet on their head, we'd take pictures, we'd sign autographs, we'd tell stories, give them all kinds of uh, public relations materials. But the realization that that child will never be able to actualize their dream uh, was very powerful to me. And it motivated me to double my efforts because I owed it to every person who was not a Thunderbird that wanted to be a Thunderbird and represent our great country to do it right. 33 years in uh, the Air Force, um, and um, other than flying combat, the Thunderbirds was the highlight. Um, it was a dream come true. And there's a huge responsibility that comes with it. Uh, it's very, very important to our country. Think about this pandemic and this year that we have. It's been very difficult for so many people. I have two daughters that are nurses. They're on the front lines of this pandemic. With the air shows being canceled, to be able to have the Blues and the Thunderbirds do a nationwide tour flying over these major metropolitan cities, smoke on, flying together, over the White House. The picture of the bomb burst over the White House, phenomenal. What does it mean to have these two premier aviation demonstration teams in our country, it's a huge amount of pride. Huge amount of pride and responsibility um, to the taxpayers that pay for our salaries and our fuel so that we can go fly and, and those who wanna follow in our footsteps. It's a tremendous honor.